Hey there, Power Platform Enthusiasts. Steph and the Floofs here. Welcome back to our channel. In today's video, we're going to cover deep linking. Deep linking is the ability in the Power Platform to take users directly to the information they need. Here we have a screen leveraging security functionality so that the user, Baron Marshall, can only see his records. If we minimize this, here we see a Teams notification that has gone to an administrator and if we click on see separation details, here we have all of the options. We have an ability to go back to see a different view, but we also have the ability to see the manager, the HR portion, and any notes that are relevant as well, all within one link for ease of use for our end users. Let's dig into deep linking and how we can accomplish this to make your user's experience more seamless. Don't forget to click subscribe below so you get notified about our next videos. Let's get started. Here we are in the finished app. This is a separation form. I'll put the link to the previous video in the comments below that gives us an overview of the separation app in its entirety. But for this video, we're just going to cover the deep linking. Let me know in the comments if you want to see any other parts of this in detail, like the multi-select checkboxes, which are being fed from a choice field in the background, but let's get started with deep linking. If you'll notice in the tree view, we have our screen set up in an order. Now when the app opens, it's going to start with this screen, but we have the option to change that. And with deep linking, we want to change that. When someone comes to our separation app to fill it out, we want them coming to this screen by default. We want them to submit their separation form. Now, if someone is a manager, we would want them to come, or manager or HR, we would want them to come to this screen first, the gallery screen. Now, how do we control that dynamically? Well, within the app here, we have an option for start screen, as well as on start, and I'll get into on start in a second, but let's start with the start screen. So what I'm doing here is I'm leveraging a switch statement, and I'm leveraging a parameter called screen name that will be passing to the app from the link, and I'll get into that in a minute too. And then depending on what we have in the link, they are directed to different screens. So if the screen name parameter is manager, they'll go into the details screen. If they're an admin, they go into the gallery screen. If they're a submitter, they go into screen details. And if it's anything else, they go into the new screen. That gives us a default functionality. I made a quick change and I made submitter camel case, which means the first letter is uppercase. These are case sensitive, so you need to make sure that whatever you put in here, you leverage that exact spelling and exact case sensitivity in the URL that you're going to pass to the app. Let's look at the on start. Now the on start functionality runs once when the app is first opened. I've expanded it out so we can see all of this. I'll get into all the details of how we implement this in a bit and explain all the processes, but I always like to show the code first. I'll make sure it's in the comments for you below as well. Now, because I don't want my coworkers to hate me, I have my code annotated. So we're starting with the deep linking. Now, if a parameter that we pass to the app ID is not blank, then we're going to go into our list, our SharePoint list, which holds the data for this. And we're going to do a lookup against the value of that parameter. And we have to leverage value here because the ID is a number. Now, next we're using a switch statement. And if the parameter that is passed to the app is submitter, and I need to change that to an uppercase S, then we're going to set our variable for the form mode to view. And if it's not, or if it's set to this admin review parameter, we're going to have the form mode be edit. This allows us to change the form mode so that end users who have submitted can only see what they've submitted. They can't make any changes. Now, as we scroll down a little bit more, we're also leveraging that parameter screen name. If that equals submitter, then we're only giving them one value in our modern tabs. We're only giving them employee details. If there are anything else, if that is blank or anything else is in play, then we're giving them all the tabs for the modern tab view, the department manager, director, HR notes, and all the orders for it. If we look at the app, I'm going to minimize this. 
and go into one of the records, you'll see here it pulls up all four of the tabs. If we look at the other user's interface, they only have the one option, plus they don't have the icon that allows them to go to the gallery, which we have in our app. Let me play it so it's a little bit larger. This icon right here that allows us to go back to see all the records. We don't want end users seeing all the records. We only want them seeing their record. Here we have the Power Automate on the back end that is waiting for submissions. So at the time of this recording, new designer is turned on by default, and it acts a lot like the old designer. When you click on one of these items, you're given options. I'm gonna turn this off for this demonstration just because it makes it easier to have everything in one pane, but you can always turn it back on. So when an item is created, and all of the data for this Power App is stored within SharePoint, but you could use Dataverse or other data sources here. This is just my use case. We have it stored in a SharePoint list, and then when an item is created, we're sending an email. This is going to be an acknowledgement email. This is something that I really like to do on all my Power Apps, because if you don't, you run the risk of the employee or the person submitting the form not realizing that they're submission has been acknowledged and submitting four or five or six of these, which can be confusing. So we are sending an email and I'm going to get into the details. We're going to create all this together. We're going to send an acknowledgement email and then we're going to update the status to a manager in progress. And you'll notice how I have annotations in here as to what the step is and then what's happening. We're updating the status. If we scroll down, to manager in progress because the very next step is sending an adaptive card. And the adaptive card is what you see here. Let me know in the comments if you want me to go into depth for this use case on adaptive cards. I have a video on it already. But this adaptive card, if we click as a manager, if we click see separation details, it takes us into the Power App and gives us as a manager all the options. The email that the end user gets, I'm gonna pause here. This is the email that the end user would get. It's addressed to them and their manager is CC'd. And if they click this link, we recorded the following details, it opens up the Power App in their instance with just their records. They have no menu, they have nothing. Let's build this flow from start to finish together. Here I am back at make.powerapps.com and we're going to need the web link for the Power App. So if I click on the ellipsis next to the name of my Power App and go to Details, here we have the web link for our app. If I click Copy and open up a new tab, and I just paste it, it'll take me directly to the Start screen, but that's not what we want to do. So I'm going to add at the end, after my tenant ID, I'm going to get rid of all of this other stuff. I'm going to add an ampersand screen name, because it's case sensitive, going to add screen name equals admin. And you see it took me directly to the start screen again because admin wasn't capitalized. So let's capitalize admin. And there it took me directly into the gallery view. Now if I change admin to manager, it's going to fail because we haven't passed it the parameter for the ID and we need the ID to fill out the form. So let's add an ID into the URL and we add multiple items to the URL by adding another ampersand. I'm going to enter ID equals 63. That just happens to be one of my records. And here we have it. Let's create the Power Automate. So now I'm going to go into create. We're at make.powerautomate.com or flow.microsoft.com. And it's going to be an automated cloud flow. The trigger that we're going to use is when an item is created. You can hit skip there. At the time of this recording, new designer is on by default. For this video, I'm going to turn it off just so everything is in the middle of the screen. When an item is created in my SharePoint list, in my use case, I'm leveraging SharePoint. You could leverage Dataverse or whatever other data source you like. The list name is separations. Now when this item is created, we're going to send an email. And I'm going to select send an email V2, which is the Office 365 Outlook connector. And we're going to add in who it's going to. We're going to select dynamic content. We're going to have it emailed to 
whoever created or whoever submitted it. The subject line will be an acknowledgement. And in here we have to leverage HTML. So I'm gonna click on the code view and hello, give an acknowledgement to whoever sent this or created this, created by display name, comma, and then we can end the, per the paragraph. I'm gonna enter in some hard return breaks, which is just plain HTML. And then we're gonna add in the href. So I'll have the code for this in the comments as well. You submitted the following details, and then we close out our code block. Now within the code block, we need to enter the web link for the app. So let's go back there and grab it. Paste it in here. In between the parentheses. And then we're going to add in the ampersand screen name equals submitter and ID equals the ID of the record. There we have it. So now the submitter will get their submission screen and the ID of the record. So if I hit save, now let's go back to the app. We have the parameters here for the, on, for the start screen. Now let's look at the on start code. When our app loads, the very first thing that the app is going to do is look to see if a parameter called ID is passed to it. If it is, it's going to go out and set a variable. We're setting var this item and we're setting it to the ID of the record that we specified in our link. So we're going back to my SharePoint list separations and we're doing a lookup for the ID of the parameter that we passed it. The param ID is set as a text, so we have to come, we have to change it to a value, so it's handled as a number. And then from there, we're setting another variable. We're setting the var form mode. So we want the form to only be in view. So if it is submitter, if the screen name parameter is submitter, then we're setting the var form mode. And now as we scroll down, we're also setting the tabs. So if the parameter screen name is submitter, you see the pattern here, we're collecting only one tab for our modern tab view. And if it isn't, if it's anything else, then we're collecting all of our tabs. That's the basics of deep linking. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. All the code will be there for you. Happy coding. If you found this tutorial helpful, please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment below. Let us know your thoughts, questions, and any topics you'd like us to cover in future videos. Sharing is caring, so don't forget to share this tutorial with your fellow Power Apps enthusiasts. Until next time, keep learning, keep exploring, and keep rocking Power Apps like a true pro. See you in the next video.